I bet you thought spring was the best time to plant, huh? Nope, fall is. Why? There are plenty of reasons. First of all, the plants are on sale. The nurseries try to get rid of their inventory before the season ends. They don't want to hold on to all the plants all winter, so they go on sale cheap, like these chrysanthemums. Buy them now, plant them, they'll come back year after year. They're a perennial, so you'll have lots of time to enjoy them. And if your garden isn't still blooming with gobs of color in October, this is the perfect time to add more flowering plants. All the plants you see here started blooming in August, and they're still going strong three months later. They'll keep going until frost. One of the prettiest late flowering plants is this Japanese anemone. It grows gracefully on this long, four foot long stem. The flowers come in a couple of colors. It grows in sun and in shade in my garden, and man, is it easy to grow. The flowers are white, pink, or rose. Some varieties have single petals, others have semi-double flowers with lots of petals ruffling out from the center. Aren't they sweet? Japanese anemones are simple to plant. They have thick, fibrous roots, which are really easy to separate and replant. If you look closely, you'll see where the Japanese anemone is having babies. See all those new leaves poking up there and there? Just pull up this new plant away from the others and move it elsewhere in the garden. So you can buy this Japanese anemone in a pot this year, plant it, and then next year after it flowers, you can separate it, divide it, put it someplace else in the garden, and that is a twofer, two for the price of one. And that's a pretty good deal. Japanese anemones are shallow rooted, so this time of year merely dig a hole the size of the roots, add a little garden compost, you can get this at the garden store, and tuck it in. Oh, and there's a couple of other great aspects to fall gardening. First of all, you plant it now, the roots grow all winter without the stress of trying to flower and grow too, and by next spring, the plant is twice as big. And if you plant in the spring, you've got to water the heck out of your newly planted perennials to keep them alive all summer long in the hot weather. Plant in the fall and Mother Nature waters the plants for you all winter long. Just when you thought it was time to put away the shovel and hibernate for the winter, now is the time to plant. Fall is the very best time. I'm Ann Jagger. I hope our paths, our garden paths, cross again soon. Time to buy you a big bag of bulbs. It's bad English, but it's a good time to get a fantastic price on a jumbo bag of spring flowering bulbs. Yes, this big bag of bulbs started at almost $20, but the price keeps dropping and dropping until they're gone. I paid 14 bucks for this bag of tulips or daffodil bulbs, and if you wait until next month, they'll be $9.95, but that's only if there's any left at the store. And you need to get them in the ground as soon as possible. When you plant any kind of bulb, there are a couple of important things to remember. Don't line them up like soldiers, one after another in a row. They like to be planted in groups, so plant them in clumps of masses together. That's how they grow in nature, and that's how they look the best. Yet another reason to throw in a bag of bulbs and why they're such a good buy in bulk. There are lots of ways to plant bulbs. You can use the big shovel or the little one. Doesn't matter. I prefer the shovel. Dig in and lift up a big clump of soil. Plop in the bulbs, yes, more than one, two or three. Use a bunch, maybe five, and merely cover them with soil again. Or you can break out the power tools. If you've got lots of planting to do in a hurry, this bit makes it easy. This one is made by Fiskars, and you just simply turn it on. It works well in loamy, easy soil. It doesn't work that well in clay because the battery will wear out quick. Drill a hole, pop it in, repeat. Remember, don't plant just one bulb to look natural. You've got to plant many. I really like the lazy method, and you can do it sitting down. No digging or straining required. All you need is some bulbs, an old recycled plastic pot, and some soil. Add some soil into the plastic pot. Make it about halfway full. Then place the bulbs around the sides and in the middle. Cover with soil, and that's all there is to it. You can plant masses of bulbs this way, as many bulbs as you have plastic pots. 
leave this out by the uh, shed or outdoors someplace where it can get the rain. Don't leave it inside in the garage or the basement because the bulbs need the rain and they need the cooler temperatures for root development. Sink the pot and all right into the ground next spring and make sure the pot is ground level. Camouflage the sides of the plastic pot so no one can see what you're up to. And here is the very best part. Imagine it's spring, the tulips have bloomed, and the leaves now are starting to turn biscuit color and they're dying off. You need to leave the leaves on there. So here's what you do. You pull the pot out and put a perennial in its place. That's pretty tricky, huh? One last thing to remember about bulbs. The pointy end always goes up. The flat end is where the roots come up. So pointy end up. I'm Ann Jagger. I hope our paths, our garden paths, cross again soon. All gardeners in Western Oregon and Washington face a common enemy, the slug. And in the life cycle of a slug, fall is the very best time to get them. Ivy and rocks give slugs safe sleeping quarters during daylight hours. They are ravenously hungry and do their damage at night. But here's the really important news about slugs. Kill one slug today in the fall and you save yourself a lot of time in the spring. This one slug can lay hundreds of eggs. And so if you get this right now, you wipe out the entire family tree in the fall. Slug bait does the trick. The bait smells good, so slugs eat it and die, but so can animals. Newer slug baits such as Sluggo, made with iron phosphate, won't hurt pets or children. When it comes to slugs, one bait is just as good as the next. But what's really important is where you put it. And here's where slug psychology comes in really handy. We put the slug bait all around the plant we're trying to save, and that's just plain bad slug strategy. Since the bait attracts the slugs, you're just inviting them to dinner. Come and get it. So contrary to popular opinion, do not put your slug bait around the plant. It just attracts them there. One slug takes the fall, makes a bridge for all the others to go over and eat your plant. Put the bait close to home where they'll eat it for breakfast. Get slugs where they live by baiting right next to the rocks and ivy. Bait all the dark, moist places they live. So put the slug bait near the hiding places, not around your plants. Now, I often think of a slug as no more than a stomach on a foot, but they're actually very smart. Did you know that slugs can see, hear, and remember? Who knew? See all these chewed leaves? The slime balls who ate here are capable of remembering this location for weeks. Yeah, slugs are icky, but they're also amazing. Experts have found out that they can remember up to two weeks where they had their last meal. So they keep on going back and back and back to that plant until it's gone. I can't even remember where my keys are overnight. And they can smell up to three feet away. So they follow their noses to our plants. And about their eyesight, apparently they can see, not very well, but they can see about six feet. How'd you like to be doing the researcher doing that study? So save yourself some time in the spring and save your plants too. Bait in the fall. And one more thing before we go. Don't put the slug bait out every single night. Do it about mm, every 10 days or every two weeks. And put it in different places. Switch it up a bit. Although we forget where we put the slug bait, the slug remembers. I'm Ann Jagger. I hope our paths, our garden paths, cross again soon. No matter how you cut it, pumpkins are just plain fun. If you think kids get excited about carving these orange orbs, you should try growing one. It is super easy, and it doesn't take a lot of work either. Your first step, pick one. The choices are mind-boggling. Squash come in so many fascinating shapes, colors, sizes, and some are so interesting it's hard to cut into them. So while the kids are getting their hands dirty, fishing out the innards from the inside of the pumpkin, ask them to save a seed or two. Sure, roast some seeds in the oven, 300 degrees for about 40 minutes till brown, but save a few for the garden too. This is all you need to grow a pumpkin, a pot, some compost from the garden store, and some seeds. You put in the compost, toss in some seeds now or in the spring, and they'll sprout when they're ready. Here's my pumpkin patch. The seeds were tossed in at this time last year and waited till this spring to sprout. I did nothing to help. 
and how exciting you're here to see the harvest of my very first pumpkins. Yeah, I've never grown them before. And here are a couple of other pumpkin tips for you. Nice. Try not to manhandle pumpkins by the top. Don't use the handle as a handle, okay? The top knot breaks off too easily and you want that. Now, instead of carving the top off, cut pumpkins from the bottom. That way you don't burn yourself putting the candle inside. And I've got a tip to make cut pumpkins last even longer. Have you ever noticed how fast carved pumpkins start to rot and mold? We spend all the time carving them and then before you know it, the face melts almost overnight. All right, so there's no Botox for pumpkins, but we need to slow the aging process. How do you do that? Keep your pumpkin outside. It's cooler and the air acts as a refrigerant for your pumpkin. Or get your pumpkin some face cream. Yeah, WD-40. It works as a preservative. Only adults should spray it inside pumpkins that will not be eaten. And yes, cover all the cut fleshy parts. You can get WD-40 at any home improvement store. The spray acts as a lubricant on exposed areas. It prevents mold spores from growing so quickly. Of course, let the spray dry before you put the pumpkin over the candle. You can carve it this year and grow it next year. Imagine how impressed everyone will be that you grew your own pumpkin. I'm Ann Jagger. I hope our paths, our garden paths, cross again soon. Yellow leaves, brown stems. There are good reasons why you need to clean up dead plants in the fall and winter. Let's take some of the guesswork out of which plants need to be cut and which you can leave for the winter and why it needs to be done. This peony is going to flop over and die. So cut off the leaves and stems of herbaceous peonies to prevent the possibility of botrytis. That's a plant virus that infects the new leaves in the spring, so this has to go. Same with the old tomato bushes and leftover veggies. The mummified fruit and vegetables are just a breeding ground for pathogens which winter over in the soil. After the first frost, this dahlia will look like slime. That's when you cut the stalk to within two inches of the ground. Leave it two weeks, then dig the dahlia, divide, or replant. Or you can leave it in the ground. Hostas are just begging you to take them out of their misery in the winter. Cut the leaves and stems to the ground. The slugs love to hide in there. Remove all the dead brown leaves from bearded iris. Remember bearded iris have leaves that are shaped like swords? There's a insect called the iris borer that will live over the winter in these dead leaves and then it'll be just waiting for the new leaves to come up in the spring. So we want to get rid of that now. Get rid of all the dead leaves. When lily stalks look like this, it's time to cut them to the ground. The leaves spent all summer soaking up the sun for next year's flower, but now it's spent. To keep butterfly bush from spreading seed, you can prune it hard. A foot or so from the ground, this will keep the bush from invading. There are some plants that I leave all winter long. I don't cut my roses back until early next March. I like the way the rose hips look. They're so brightly colored and they look great with a tinge of frost on them in the fall. The birds like to eat them as well. You need to pull off all the old leaves though, because that's a breeding ground for pathogens and be sure to pick up the leaves that are on the ground. You can also leave this sedum, Autumn Joy, alone. The seed heads look cool well into the winter and make a nice, really long-lasting arrangement. I've had this vase full of flowers for three weeks. If you still can't decide what to cut or what to leave, here's a good rule of thumb. If the leaves are yellow and the stalk is brown, cut it out. If the leaves are green, let it be. I'm Ann Jagger. I hope our paths, our garden paths, cross again soon.